Tell the person sitting next to you, someday. If you know somebody, not Sunday, someday. How many of you ever said the word someday? Be honest, if you said that, say amen. Someday. Somebody said, one of these days. Someday. I remember way back in 2002, we hadn't really been here in Christian at a, another building. I didn't have any request in there a year or two. And I drove by this church. And I remember looking at it and thinking, someday, not today, but someday. I remember when I came to meet the pastor, the writer, the pastor, the pastor, I was starting in this area. He walked me around this building. I didn't ask him to, because are you here to tell me to quit? And I said, no. He had like 20 people church was, was suffering and, and he goes, oh you're not here to buy this? And I go, no, but someday. 2009, 2010 when he called me, he said, we're ready to sell. It's going to be your church. And I remember thinking in November and December of 2010, someday. I would come at that time, we were trying to sell the other, other building. It didn't sell till, till June. And we had a lot of buyers. I would come in, I would sit in the parking lot, they would leave the cables open. And at night, I would be in that parking lot. And I would look at this building and I would say, someday. About three or four weeks ago, myself and one of Pat's employees went up the tower to fix the lights at the very top of that tower. I didn't do it, his worker did. I held the ladder. He walked up the ladder, he put the ladder on the roof, beat it against, the, against that tower. He went all the way to the top, climbed off the ladder on the tower, and hung over the edge and changed those lights. I was terrified. I ordered him down. He was trying to change another one. I said, come down now. I was terrified. About three or four nights later, I was sitting in that same parking lot. I looked at this building. I thought the Holy Spirit told me someday it came to pass. And it did. It came to pass someday. I was sitting in my in my Mustang. For those of you that don't know, I've been working on a 69 Mustang since 2003, 2004. It starts now, it runs. It just got painted, it has a brand new upholstery. I sat in it the other day, nobody was around by myself. And I remember way back on, on Peach and Butler sitting in the garage in that car thinking someday, but I was sitting on a bucket because I'd taken everything out of it. Someday it came to pass. I walk around this building and every building, every, every place I sit, I remember saying, someday we're going to do this, someday we're going to do that. And I want you to understand, God wants to make all your someday's come true. The Bible says he wants to give us the desire of our heart and then some. Whatever it is right now, you're thinking, I'm, I'm going to give God someday. Whatever it is, you're thinking, some of you are saying, someday, Pastor, I'm going to serve God with all my heart. You know what? Someday could be the day. Pastor, someday I'm, I'm going to really, I'm going to dedicate myself to the Lord. That someday could come to pass. Someday, Pastor, I'm going to tithe. I'm going to give offerings. I'm going to be a part of what God's doing at this church. Someday could come. I used to look at Ralph's RVs and he's had many in the time I've known him. And I would think someday. Now I sit and I look at mine and I say, someday I'm going to get to use it. Someday. I want you to understand, God wants to make all your someday's come true. Someday I'm going to be married. Someday I'm going to be happy, have a family, I'm going to have my own house. Someday I'm going to be sitting around a log, a log fire or or sitting around the television with kids opening gifts and grandkids, God will make someday come true. Every one of you has said it, and when you said it in your spirit, God heard it. What is it that you want to do someday? What is it that you want to accomplish someday? Someday doesn't have to be too far away. If you are willing to put God first in your life and make him the priority of every day. I hear people say, someday I'm going to be, I'm going to give this church a big chunk of money. And I think if you can't give it a little chunk right now, why would you ever give it a big chunk? Amen. I hear people say, someday, Pastor, I'm going to quit swearing. 
I'm going to quit lying, I'm going to quit stealing, I'm going to quit the thing. Some days today. But you someday need to be in right priorities with God. In Zechariah chapter 8, verse 4 and 5, the word of God says, this is probably one of the most important verses in the Bible, and we never look at it, never know it's there. But in Zechariah chapter 8, verse 4 and 5, this is what the Lord, God Almighty, says. This is not what the pastor says. This is not what the politicians say. This is what the God said. This is what God says. Once again, or someday, in some version, men and women of ripe old age will sit on the streets of Jerusalem, each of them with cane in hand because of their age. This is what Zechariah was saying from captivity, from the struggle where they were fighting and they were battling under oppression. He said, someday we're going to grow old in the promised land. Someday we're going to sit on the porch in peace and security. Those of you that are sitting here right now, I want you to understand something. God wants you to someday sit on the porch, sit in a lawn chair, and feel the warmth of the sun on you. And he wants you to have security. And he wants you to have peace. And God says, someday that will come to pass. The next verse says, the city streets will be filled with boys and girls playing. Some of you are thinking, Pastor, right now they're all being sent home. What do you think they're going to do? Stay in the house? They're going to break windows in the church. That's what they're doing. But I want you to understand what he was saying. Yes, we're struggling right now. Yes, we're in captivity right now. Yes, we are in this place. But someday, we'll be sitting on the porch and the kids will be back on the streets playing like if everything was okay. Now, I told you last week I was working on this sermon. I told you my wife and my children had talked about this and talked to some cousins. I had no idea we would be facing what we're facing now. But I'm here to tell you, someday, this will pass. They think it'll reach its peak at the end of April. At the end of April, the, the curve of the, of the contagion goes up, and at the end of April, it starts going down. The reason they're doing all this social isolation is so that curve is not that high. So that curve is right here, lower than what it is. It's going to happen. It's going to get worse before it gets better. But they're trying to keep it from getting really bad. So that curve, when it starts going down at the end of April, they want it to be down here, not up here. But I'm here to tell you someday you'll be sitting on the porch. Someday the kids will be walking on the streets. And just like Zechariah said, we will have peace and security someday. It wasn't enough for them to just want to return home. They wanted to return to a home of peace and security. I'm here to tell you there's, there has to be peace at home. And there has to be security at home. As these kids are staying home and, and as these uh, uh, elderly people in our, in our community are being told, stay in the house, don't go out, you're the, you're the ones that are most susceptible. I'm here to tell you, there's nothing wrong with being home if it's a place of peace and security. What can you do to make your home the safest, most peaceful place? Number one, don't be so easily offended by your loved ones. Sometimes we get more, more mad, more mad, I don't know if I can say that, or madder. Sometimes we get more upset with the people we love than we do with complete people, strangers or people we work with. And sometimes we're, we're more at peace at work than we are at home. Something's wrong with that. Your home needs to be a, be a place of refuge and security. He said, we want to go back to Jerusalem. We want to go back home. We want to see our elders and our children at peace at home. I'm here to tell you, you have a responsibility. That responsibility is to do whatever you can because the devil wants to make your place of home, a place of drama, a place of, of, of fighting and arguing and a mess. Some of you need to go home right now and pick up those socks you took off last night. If you can't say amen, say, well. My wife will tell you, there's not a thing I take off that doesn't go back where it belongs. She gets, she, she gets crazy sometimes. She goes, do the shoes have to be in the line? Do they have to be in the road? I go, yes. And now as I'm getting older, guess why they have to be in the line? And they're like, I will forget where I left them. <laughs> I, as I get older, I get more routine. I have my, I put on my chaquitas, and I, I wear my chaquitas out to the garage where I take off my chaquitas, and I put on my shoes that I'm going to wear for the day, and I go out those shoes. When I come back, my chaquitas better be there. But God forbid one of the teenagers takes those chaquitas. 
they messed up my routine. Because now, I have to walk around barefoot. And there's no peace in the house. So you know what I've learned? Don't sweat the little things. Have an extra pair of chaquitas. For the last two weeks, I've watched Mama Bear wearing Papa Bear slippers. Mama Bear got herself some slippers, and they say Mama Bear on them. They're, they're like red flannel, checkered flannel slippers. I don't know if you guys saw them and sell them at Colt. They say Mama Bear. So Mama Bear has slippers. Papa Bear went and bought his own. I went by myself to me from me at Christmas. Papa Bear. Well, Mama Bear's been wearing them. I watch them. Mama Bear can't find her shoes because she doesn't put them where they belong. They're, they're not in a straight line. So I tell myself, I can lose my mind, or I can smile and say, she wants to be near me. Some of you say, you're lying to yourself. Hey, it's my dream, it's my, it's my dream world, leave me alone. Because let me tell you, every little thing can bother you. My kids have a very bad habit of taking my toothpaste to their bathroom. I have no idea why they can't use their toothpaste. And you know what I hate about this? This, I'm really sharing some personal stuff here. My wife is upset. I do not like it when they grab the toothpaste and squeeze it and then leave it like that. I don't like that. I close it and I get the, this, this, the end of the toothbrush and I slide it forward so it's a whole tube in there. How many, how many of you do that same man? We're the normal ones. They will grab it, they'll squeeze it, and it, the way they squeeze it, they must be getting a ton of toothpaste. How many of you are squeezers? Say amen. amen. Yeah, you're the ones that are disorderly and have no order in your life. They're the same ones that leave their socks in the middle of the floor. Amen. amen. <laughs> Let me tell you, I can, I can, and, and my wife is finally learning to tell me that this is, this is, and I hate it when she says this because she's right. She says, someday, they're not going to be here. And you're going to wish they were here to squeeze your tooth. I get sad. I'm like, okay. So I grab her toothpaste. And then she gets mad at me. Nothing is better than a home that's full of peace and security. Don't sweat all the little things because you might make someday a bad day instead of a good day. Look at what Romans 14 11 says. So I think your priority, if you're going to have the good some days come true, is you have to have your priorities right. Number one, I want peace and security in my home. Number two, Romans 14 11 says, where it is written, as I live, says the Lord, someday, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. I don't know what verse they have up there, and I think this is a little different. As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. You know what? Someday every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Christ. So this is something that we should all long for. The day when everyone that is in our home is serving the Lord. Amen. We need to constantly be praying that someday our loved ones will come to serve God. We need to act and behave in a way like what we do serving God is something desirable. If you're always miserable, if you're always judging, if you're always putting them down, guess what? They're never going to want to serve the same God that you do. But if you keep in mind, I'm the only example they have of what a Christian is, someday they're going to serve the Lord if I learn how to behave today. Think about that. I want you to hear what I just said. Yes, I want peace and security in my home. But I want the people in my home to be saved. So I better live in a way that doesn't give any disrepute to God. You should not act better at work than you do at home. You should not be nicer to the people at work than you are at home. Have you ever had, heard a parent say, don't do that in public. Don't embarrass me like that in public. Well, what's wrong with you, parent? If I can get away with it at home, why can't I just do it here in the street? I remember hearing growing up, how many of you heard that growing up say amen? amen? Yeah. Wait till you get home. Remember that? Wait till you get home. It was like a threat. Wait till you get home. I knew when I got home, they would forget, and I could lose my mind. But in public, you better fly straight. 
I remember stealing a candy bar in a store. My mom took me back to the store and she found the store person in charge, the manager, and she said, you need to tell him. I was young, I was six, seven years old, and you maybe younger. And she said, you better tell them, the store manager, you just stole this candy bar. And I told the store manager, I stole this candy bar. And then he said, he said, don't, this is not good, you shouldn't be doing this, people steal candy bars, go to jail, we can call them. Made a big old scene about 25 cent candy bar. Well, now they're like $1.99, but, but back then, I remember thinking, my mom was saying, wait till you get home, wait till you get home. I was like, I can't wait till I get home because I can run from her. She's not going to catch me. She's older. I got home and it was no longer a threat. So she, the threat became, wait till your dad gets home. And because you see, if you weren't allowed to misbehave in public, you can misbehave at home, but at public, you let don't embarrass me. What? We should desire that we are the same at home and we are in public. You can't lose your mind in the house. Don't lose your mind in the church. You can't lose your mind in the house. Don't lose your mind in the store. Don't. Hey, how about just, let's not lose our mind. I desire for everybody in my household to be saved. So that means I'm going to be the same person at home that I am out in public. Sometimes the people in our home don't serve the Lord because they see what you're really like. Why do so many pastors' kids and deacons' kids end up wrong? Because in the church, they're one thing, and they get home and there's something else. I thank God. You don't know how much I pray that my kids keep serving the Lord. I was 22. Keep going, Mia. 23. See, I'm getting old. Yeah, the number was, what happened? The number was up there, the three. It came down. We never saw it. It's gone. We brought up a news on a Wednesday night, and three was up there. I was kind of bad. But I want you to understand something. If, if I was something different here than I was at home, but you know my kids said, Dad is just as crazy at church as he is at home. Amen. Every one of us has a responsibility. We want someday every knee to bow and every tongue to confess. But we need to be the same thing outside of church that we are inside of church. And right now, it's really easy. It's really easy right now. The whole world's losing its mind. Nobody worse than Daniel. Who called me yesterday at 5.20 a.m. 5.48? I thought it was 5.20. At 5.40 he called me, Pastor, where you at? At home asleep. He goes, oh, I'm sorry to call you back. It's 5 in the morning, I'm thinking. He goes, hey, I'm at Nico, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, who's up? <laughs> who's even up at this time? Daniel and Christina would go shopping at five, at 5 early on Saturday because there's nobody in the store. And Daniel said the line was all the way down one aisle, wrapped around the, the whole other aisle. He goes into the meat department. Why am I still waiting my bike? Oh, because I'm on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel said it was crazy. And Daniel said, people are losing their mind, Pastor. There's nothing in the store. Everything is kind of like, what's missing? He goes, there's no toilet paper. He goes, there's, there's no cleaning supplies, there's no nothing. People, I went to Home Depot and they had everything I did. Home Depot had, they had Clorox wipes. Jason and I got toilet paper, Clorox wipes. In fact, we were even giving some to people. <laughs> we were like, you want some? <laughs> and they had water. I don't know if you know this, the Home Depot in Southeast Fresno, it, it, in all of the United States, that Home Depot sells the most water than any Home Depot in the United States and the most dunted. Think about that for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> They had everything we needed. My wife and I went to Food Max last night about, about we were done here, it was about 5.30, 6 o'clock, we went to Food Max. We got everything we needed, everything was fine. They told us, oh, you should have been here hours ago. They did it with the latest book. Oh, it was crazy. People dropped a pallet of water from way up there, and in a minute, all that water was gone. Somebody grabbed a cane and started grabbing water off a pallet on top of that third shelf, pulling it down. People are losing their mind. If you look normal right now, finish. That's easy to do. People are saying it's the end of the world. People are saying, you need to be saying, you know what? God is God. And if I get sick, God is God. If my loved one gets sick, God is God. And if somebody passed away, God is still God. <laughs> we don't need to make fun of whatever church closed or people who didn't go or people are not here. We just need to say, God's in charge. Don't you be like Every knee shall bow. And I'm going to act like it's okay. And you know what? It is very serious. Don't get me wrong. 
is extremely serious. It's happening in Syria. My mom found her way back from Mexico. She buried her brother on Wednesday, and she's on a plane right now from McAllen to Seattle, and then from Seattle, she'll drive home. My mom is 75 years old and has diabetes, and she's, she's right for this. I told her mom, she goes, well, I'd rather just stay here. She goes, nobody is sick here. She's in Mexico. Nobody is running around losing their mind. In fact, Mexico thinking of closing the border to the United States. <laughs> Wouldn't that be classic if they closed their borders? You know, I, I would, I would, I would go down there just to fake try to get over. <laughs> but I said they're literally talking about we should close the border to the United States um, because their climate people are getting cold and flu because the climate's getting cold. I don't know if you notice Greenland and Africa, nobody, not one case. Why? Because Greenland they're already used to dealing with the cold, but in Africa it's too hot. Now don't go home and turn up the heater. You want it cool. It's when you get sick, it's because it's cold. And I'm not sick, I have allergies. Daniel gave to me by calling me a bad friend, yeah, yeah. But everybody's losing their mind. It's so easy to shine as a, as a Christian, as a believer. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. Nobody's going to bow a knee to God if you're losing your mind. Finally, 1 Corinthians 13, 12. What does the love chapter have to do with Sunday? 1 Corinthians 13, 12. Vice Pastor talking about that love chapter middle of all this and, and someday. Look what the love chapter says. He's been talking about love, love, love. In 1 Corinthians 13, 12. For now, we only see a reflection as in a mirror. But one day, we shall see him face to face. And he says, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then shall I know fully. As I am fully known. Now I preached this not too long ago. But I want you to concentrate on the part. Someday we will see him face to face. Someday. You know, Sister Naomi is 83 now. 82. She might be 84 now. She sits right there. Uh, I think of Mama, Mary's Mama, Mama used to climb the steps at that church. We have a responsibility to take care of people like Sister Naomi. She's 80 some years old. Uh, Grandma who used to climb the stairs. Uh, Ralph who just lost her mom. When you and Lord Andy just lost her mom. We would have gone. We're not going to have them forever. And at a time like this, check in on them. Check in on them. What can you do for them? They should not go buy groceries. But let me tell you how they feel. My mom said, it's beautiful, I want to stay here. She goes, whatever happens, I'm ready to see God. I'm ready to see Jesus. I'm 50 years old and I'm ready to see grandkids. I'm ready to see weddings, then grandkids. I'm busy with talking, you're not going to marry me. So it's like, okay, she goes, like, oh, she goes, Pastor Gary. She really said that. And uh, she wants me to walk her down. I want you to understand that we're pretty soon we're going to have an idol. Jason, Jason, Jason. Nobody else is actually Jason. <laughs> um, I, I look at this, and we should all have the hope to see Jesus face to face. You should all have that hope. You should all have that desire. At a time like this, when everything's going crazy, you and I are like, what? I get to see Jesus. If in the next 30 days this does go way high, and that happens. You guys need to know this. I, my 100% disability is for autoimmune deficiency. You know what that means? That if I get this, I'm at, I'm at risk. Right. But I told my wife, I, I wish I would just get it already, but it's not so strong. <laughs> because a month from now it could be strong. But you know what? I'm ready to see him face to face. I want to see grandkids. I want to see my kids married. And I would not, not want to leave my children. And I would not want to leave you behind. And I, I, but I can't act like I'm scared. Because then where's my faith? That I'm going to see him face to face. It's easy for me to say at 50. It's easy for me to say at 50 with all the immune. But for my mom to say it at 75 years old, 
with diabetes, completely at risk, you gotta fly into Seattle, where all the dead people, and say, it's okay, I'm ready to see Jesus. Don't ask me today. <coughs> Excuse me, don't worry. As I told you, Daniel gave me allergies. He won't be allergies. Let's go touch the microphone. <laughs> I want to ask you today. Can you say like Job did in Job 19.26? Job in 19.26 said, Even after my skin has been destroyed, in my flesh I will see God. He was sick and he was dying. He said, even if my flesh must be destroyed, I know I will see God. The psalmist in Psalm 1750. <coughs> Psalm 1750. King David wrote, as for me, I know. I will behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I will be satisfied with your presence. Can you say that today? In Matthew 5 8, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. That's all. My hope is not in the federal government. My hope is not in medication. My hope is not in anything other than no matter what happens, I know I will see. on this earth that you're not looking forward to heaven. Don't get so comfortable here in your, in your papa, papa bear slippers, in sweatpants, silk shirt, in a recliner that swivels and, 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 and reclines and, and watch all the channels you have on cable with a cup of hot chocolate that you don't long for heaven. We are commanded to set our hearts on things above. Is your heart set on seeing Jesus someday? Someday I will have this car, someday I will have this house, someday I will have this, someday I'll have that, someday I'll have that. None of those some days can be more important than someday I will see Jesus. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes right Close your eyes. Lord, I thank you for these, your children that are here today. That probably on the way here, on the freeway, saw the sign that says, less is more, avoid gatherings. But they didn't see this as a gathering. They saw this as, I need to be in the house of the Lord. I need to be in the house of God. This is more to me than a gathering. This is my opportunity to worship you wholeheartedly with other like-minded people. My opportunity to sit in your house and pray. And we do that right now, Lord. We lift our country to you. We lift your country to you. We lift this world to you. It's going on everywhere, not just here. There's so many people paralyzed by fear. Every day, more people die of other illnesses. More, more people die of other illnesses than this. Yet this is the one that's instilling fear. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit would bring calm. The Holy Spirit would bring caution. The Holy Spirit would bring clarity. And the Holy Spirit would bring cleanliness in the name of Jesus. Help us, God, to be calm, cautious, and clean. Let me be calm, let me be cautious, and let me be clean. Jesus, you are Lord of everything. And we thank you that someday we will see you face to face. But not yet. You're not through with us here. I pray every one of these people will leave here thinking someday I will see God. And someday this will pass. Two or three months from now, we're all going to be looking back saying, we got through that. Some of us may become ill, but we're going to help us get through it. 
Help us to not lose our mind no matter how bad it is. Lord, we know you're in control. We know you say you bless this nation. We ask you right now to show it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to show that this nation is blessed. Because it still supports your nation in Israel. And because we still, today the president said it's a national day of prayer. For this, Lord, we pray that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, if there's somebody in one of our neighbors that's in need, help us. If one of our friends, help us. Remind me right now, my neighbors across the street, they're both in their 80s. I need to call them and see if they need anything. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. And amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. If you haven't seen, there's some samples of rocks behind that window that we're thinking of putting on the wall. If you have an opinion, go look at one and give me an opinion.